As I uh, usually go to NBC this year, um, Marie and I decided to to not go, and then in doing so, I um, thought about speaking here this morning at the church. So um, I thought it was a really good idea at the time until the months ticked and ticked by, and now it's arrived, and and now I'm a little nervous. However, the Lord has prepared me to to do this. I'm very happy to do this when he gives me the opportunity. And um, I'd like to take this time to minister to you today. Good morning, what a privilege it is here to be here in the house of the Lord and to worship and to learn from his word. I praise the Lord for all of you who have been able to come this morning. And I thank you for all who participated in the service, both in presenting it this morning and behind the scenes to put it all in place. It is a different perspective that you get um, when you do these things that are not the norm for you. In this case, planning the service, making sure the songs are chosen, arranging a pianist, sound help, communication amongst the parties involved, and so on and so forth. However, the easiest part of all was relying on the people who do it regularly and have, have some insight on how it's done. By watching them, you see how they do things. You ask them for advice or help, or they simply offer it to you. Each of these characteristics have one common denominator. Everybody led by example in their specific roles of execution. This leads into our message this morning, which I entitled, Leading by Example. But again, before we do that, I'd like to pray one last time. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, as this is the day that you have made. It is perfect. Perfect because you designed it this way. I pray for the rest of our QBC family who are up at NBC this morning that they will be blessed and will enjoy great fellowship and weather and be anointed by the Holy Spirit as they hear from your word as well. We are truly blessed to have the freedom to gather together in your house. And I pray that as I deliver this message, you give me the strength and courage and the words of wisdom that you have placed upon my heart. In all this, I pray in your awesome and glorious name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So who leads by example? You know, being a sports guy, I will say a coach or an athlete. As being a manager and a leader of a job, I would say a boss, but a teacher, a mentor, and basically anyone who has experience in doing something and something well, like this morning, to help me, leads by example. There's one other pairing of people who do this as well. Some of us are blessed to still have them. Some of us, unfortunately, have lost them. And sadly, some of us never did know them. Before I reveal who they are, I'll tell you a little story of how I became one. <clears throat> Going back almost two years ago, Marie and I received a call or a text now a day, of course, from my youngest daughter, inviting us out for dinner with her now husband. So I started asking myself, self, Felicia asked us to go for dinner, but there's usually something attached. Like I get stuck with the bill. That's her, that's her answer, like Louie and Sanders, my other kids. It costs her a company that's good nowadays. Or well, they haven't seen us in a while, so maybe we should go out. Full willing, full well knowing that she had something in mind that she wanted to eat and didn't want to make it at home. Not that she couldn't, she just didn't. But all kidding aside, when my kids ask Marie and I to do something, regardless of what it is, we do it to the best of our capabilities. So we arrive at the restaurant. Again, I knew exactly what she was going to order, as we've been through this many times. I knew exactly what it was going to cost me. Regan. Not so sure, he's a big guy. He can eat a lot similar to my son's range, so I was prepared. So as things progressed, we showed her appetizer right on cue. Regan surprised me by bypassing the appetizer, which was nice. And then they presented Marie and I a card. A card? What was this for? It's too early for either of our birthdays or Christmas. But we opened it up. To my surprise, it was the best gift. I could have gotten any occasion. It read. Now before I go any further, I will say it didn't matter who paid for dinner that night. I would have bought everybody dinner. My oldest daughter, not long after that, also told me some news regarding her and her fiance that only escalated what was written on that card. Two separate events that changed my life. The card read, only great parents become grandparents. 
That was it. And there's the reveal. The pair of people who also lead by example are grandparents. Today I would like to tell you what the Bible says about being a good grandparent. When I was born, I had seven out of eight grandparents and great my grandparents alive. There's a picture of me with all of them. This is pretty remarkable. My two granddaughters are similarly blessed with grandparents, great grandparents, and great great grandparents. If you could open your Bible to Psalm 78, 4 through 8, it expresses to the upcoming generations the importance of not doing wrong what the previous generations did and escape the judgment of the Lord. Not to repeat the sins their parents and grandparents committed and to keep God's commandments. It reads specifically. We will not hide from them their children, but tell them, but tell to them, tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, and the wonders what that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but to keep his commandments, that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was, was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. God had tremendous grace upon the children of Israel in spite of their sinful ways at times. This passage tells us how to teach the upcoming generations to set their hopes and sights on God. As important as it is to lead by example for all the right reasons, we can also reflect back and use examples of things that we have not been doing wisely, and like in this passage, to teach and guide the little ones, or older ones as they grow, to make the right decisions. Sometimes the saying, don't look back, or it's all just water under the bridge now, is seen as a way to simply forget the past and move on. Even, even Jesus cautions in Luke 9:62 that no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back, meaning that a plowman who looks behind him will cut a crooked line in the field, but looking forward, they will see where they are going and cut a straight line and continue to look ahead to Jesus, and that's how he wants us to follow him, cut that straight line. But here it clearly states that we need to, at times, perhaps certain times, look back to see poor decisions and wrongdoings in order to move forward to make the right ones. We can teach our grandchildren about God's love and provisions for them, even through our mistakes, and then through his guiding light and grace, he steers us straight again. As grandparents, or Nana and Papa, as Marie and I refer to, we have some different, somewhat different roles than their parents. Equally important, but different. We will get into that shortly, but here are a few examples of how children view the differences between their mothers and grandmothers, and subsequently their fathers and grandfathers. Mothers and grandmothers. Grandmas like you to eat a lot. They're a lot harder to explain things to. They hug you too much, but they usually give you things. That seems like a pretty fair trade-off. Fathers versus grandmas. Grandpas have, a, have way better stories than dads do. They get sicker than their dads do, but with that being said, they need more naps. They let you do things that your dad says are too young for you to do, but they ultimately think you're the greatest child in the world when everybody else knows that you're not. So as you can see, the children have a view of grandparents that revolves around fun, affection, comfort. That is all true. The role of the grandparent is not to raise the grandchild. That's the parent's responsibility. God said a man should leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife. Cleave to become bonded, closer to their mates and to become one flesh. There is no room for the parents or in-laws to enter into a marriage, even if there are now children involved. That is still the role of their own parents. We are to support the parents' decisions, pray for them, pray for them and the children, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. With that being said, if the safety of the child is involved, then a conversation with their parents, your children, will be required to ensure the safety of the little one is being upheld. If they need our advice, they'll ask for it. Believe me, it has been hard to keep quiet all the time. I'm not saying that my daughters and sons are doing a bad job. Quite the contrary. They have done a wonderful job in raising my granddaughters, and I'm extremely proud of both of them. But sometimes you want to add your two cents worth. That's where the leading by example comes into play. Your children remember how they were raised, how you were with them, how you are with their grandchildren each time you see them. 
One of the greatest joys in my wife's life now is when either Sandra, Joe, or Felicia will ask her for advice or her opinion. Sometimes they will tweak it slightly depending on what it is or if things are different now with technology or availability of things. But the underlying note here is the example that Maria has set over the years has been a major factor. There have been countless times when Marie has even mentioned her mom, Marilyn, or Nanny, did this or always did that. Felicia and Sandra will also remember those things. Generation to generation to generation. Role models and leading by example. I can remember the same things. Many of you know my grandma and grandpa. Before my grandpa went to be with the Lord, he instilled many qualities in me and my kids that we remember fondly. My grandma to this day continues to be an example to all of us that can never be forgotten. Its value, their role model, is far greater than silver or gold. Having someone to teach, lead, guide, and help you is priceless. As my children raise their kids, we need to allow them to be become parents as much as we need to learn to become grandparents. Marie and I work hard to support them. Work hard in the sense that we are new to the grandparent business like they are new to the parenting business. There are things as, as grandparents that we should be doing. The Bible gives us some guidelines regarding these. Many of the grandparents in the Bible had huge impacts on their grandchildren. For example, Jacob blessed Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Naomi was the grandmother of Obed, who begat Jesse, who later begat King David. Lois was extremely influential in the life of her grandson, the pastor and evangelist Timothy. Second Timothy 1 says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that first dwelt in our grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you. A clear indication of how generations have influenced one another, leading by example, showing God's love, and having that faith in Him is so important. As a Christian grandparent, we should be showing God's love to our grandchildren and teaching them of His ways. We can read the Bible stories, we can sing them songs, but most importantly, leading a godly life is the best way to go. Being a godly grandparent is more than just reading the Bible. Although that is extremely important, a daily godly role model sets the stage when the day comes when you are no longer here and are up with the Lord, and then they will realize that they will see you once again up in heaven. The saying, actions speak louder than words, is a term that is often used but not always understood. A child is always watching. They may not understand the words being used, but will always understand and see the actions. If you say one thing and do another, that is the basis of being a hypocrite. By doing that, this makes the mistake that perhaps hypocrisy is okay, and it's not. Being a person, a grandparent of integrity, is more important, is important to how a grandchild will see you and remember you. You want your legacy to be, uh, to, be to them one of character, love, and above all, God influenced. Remember, more is caught than taught. If you don't want your words of wisdom to be drowned out by your actions, you don't want your words of wisdom to be drowned out by your actions. When you say one thing and do it, regardless of the outcome, it will be a powerful lesson that will be learned and understood well after you've passed on. In doing some research for this, I came across a quote that reads, The right thing is not always popular, and the popular thing is not always right. That is what leading by example is all about. Regardless of the outcome, regardless of what happens, be true to who you are, teach others to be the same, and do what is right, not, to, not necessarily what is popular. I've always tried to be a leader, not a follower. If my grandkids learn something from me, I pray that it would include that. Do what is right, not what is easy, or what is the norm. Some people think that being a Christian is easy. No, not necessarily. God will make things smooth, he will definitely help you, but God will lead you to do things that are right. He will teach you, guide you through things that will make you be better and stronger with Him. It may be difficult, hard, and completely the, and possibly the most unpopular thing to do, but again, it will be the right thing. As a Christian grandparent, we should pray. Pray seriously for our grandchildren. Romans 12.12 12 says, Be constant in prayer, not to grow weary in praying, and the Apostle James says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Here are some guidelines that you can follow to help with this as well. We should pray for their ordinary needs. These being the things like their everyday health and safety. Pray for them as they have to go to a tooth pulled, or do well on a test, 
In other words, pray for their overall well-being. We should ask the Lord to help them in making decisions related to the temptations of the world around them when they become older and being strong in those decisions. Be strong in our own decisions when it comes to giving advice. We should also be praying for their salvation. We should be praying that the Lord will bring people into their lives that will also have strong values and reinforce the gospel. That their hearts will be receptive to hearing and receiving the gospel as they grow, that the Holy Spirit will be revealed in truth that they can't reveal in a truth that they can't refuse. That the evil one will be held at bay and be kept from blinding their eyes. We should also pray for things like their future mates in life. That they cross paths with others that have strong seeds of faith in their lives, or that their parents or grandparents were good role models for them. We should pray for wisdom when it comes to making life decisions in the future. That they will remember things like making the right decision may not be the most popular, but it will always be the right one. That they may build a strong work ethic, including honesty and integrity. Knowing what to do when it comes to their future goals in life, including education, employment, and finances. That they may be quick to confess their sins and fight against the forces of the evil one as he tries to destroy them as they come across trials and tribulations. That they will face and that they'll have to learn, but the tough times will help them grow strength in their spiritual faith and their walk with the Lord. Finally, to pray for their individual spiritual growth. As they grow through the trials of life, as they go through the trials of life and the growing up process, they will face obstacles that they need to rely on the Lord for direction. Luke 18, 1 through 8, Jesus uses a parable to illustrate that they ought to pray and not to lose heart. That they fight against temptation as told in Luke 22, 40. And, that, and when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. That their faith may be strong and not fail. Luke 22:32 says, But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And a final example, a final example is that their love for others may grow stronger day by day, as stated in Philippians 9, 1, 9 and 10. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with the knowledge and the, all the sermon, that you may approve what is excellent, and be and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Let your grandchildren know that you are praying for them. Let them know how important it is to you that you want to pray for them and need to pray for them and want to pray for them. It will astound you to know that when they know this and realize this, they will appreciate and love the fact that you love them so much that you make special time to talk to God about them and ask His blessings on them. I know this full well. I know this full well, this truth, as my grand does it for me and my family all the time. I have seen my grand's light on at every hour of the day or night. I have dropped by in the middle of the day and I've asked her what she's doing. Her simple reply is, I'm just praying. Praying for you and your family, or whoever else has been on her mind. Maria and myself have gone over to ask her to pray for us for various things that, that either we need help with, or our kids, or now our grandkids and she'll always follow up days later on the progress. When Samuel decided to retire and King Saul took over, many came to Samuel and asked him to continue to pray for them. Samuel answered the multitude and said, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, as written in 1 Samuel 12, 23. But as grandparents to, as grandparents to our grandchildren, not all children are blessed with a prayer warrior. Try to seek out others you can pray for in the confines of your heart and let them know at an appropriate time that you've been praying for them. As being a grandparent, there are other biblical roles we can assume. We can be a blessing giver. Proverbs 10.7 says, The memory of the righteous will be a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. You can do this and be a, a blessing giver spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Spiritually, as we mentioned, praying for them as they grow older and with them, thanking God for them as a special gift and letting them that they are a special gift and letting them know that they are a special gift from God and encouraging them that as they grow and mature with their gifts given to them. Emotionally, we can bless them by communicating our unconditional love for them always, to encourage them through difficult times and celebrating their accomplishments, either coming through these difficult times or accomplishments in general. The acknowledgement of their achievements and making special time for them to celebrate them 
will be a long-lasting memory that they will cherish always. Be a legacy maker. Proverbs tw uh, 27 tells us, The righteous who walks with his integrity, blessed are his children after him. We have touched this point at times a little earlier, but to expand slightly, it means we should bring honor to our family's name and reputation. We all know examples of people who their parents or grandparents were, their name coincided with how they were known or what they did, how they lived and how they are or were, how they are or were remembered. We need to live our lives both in public and in private in a way that will do this. Bring out the best in people around you. Make them better for having a friend or colleague or grandparent like you. Have a strong finish line in life. Not saying that the end is near. Being a grandparent doesn't make any of us old, just wiser. A strong finish means that we have goals in mind, direction, and example to follow. Be faithful to the Lord and to yourself and to others. Love people and use things instead of loving things and using people. Do things the right way. Leave that strong legacy of integrity and faithful living. Be a torchbearer in your grandchildren's life and your community for that matter. Psalm 71, 18 reads, So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Tell your grandchildren about the gospel, the unwavering love that God has for all of us that he sent his son to die on the cross to pay for the penalty of our sins. Let them see his love through you for everyone, both the saved and unsaved people in the world. Let them see how you respond to others who are in need and trust that the Holy Spirit will draw them close to him on his time schedule. We can, we can plant the seeds of salvation for our grandchildren and to anyone for that matter. It is only the Holy Spirit who can take it from there. We have had thousands of people come here through our outreach program. We have shown them God's love. We have shown them our love. We have prayed for them and with them. We know all that because we have witnessed it with our own eyes. What we don't know is how those seeds have all played out in their lives. We need to continue to be a beacon of light in an ever-darkening world. We need to help guide them through it. Help them take bold but gracious stands as it pertains to worldly issues and for their faith and what they believe in now and will as they grow up. An old Chinese proverb says this, one generation plants the trees, another generation gets the shade. Each of our families have planted trees for us. We have all benefited in one way or another from these trees. Perhaps some of these trees haven't given off as much shade as they were intended to. Some may not have grown as big as they were expected to, and perhaps some are still growing. Folks, both as parents, grandparents, family members, family members in Christ, we need to plant strong trees. With well-established roots, your stream of water flowing underground to nourish it, prune it if we need to. Do whatever it takes to make our trees one of strength and integrity for generations to come and be protected by it. I have had strong trees planted for me, and believe me, that many times in my life I have strayed out from underneath the protection of those trees. I have been burned by the scorching sun and left out in the rain, but that tree has always been there to come back to. We need to make sure that we do that for our grandkids and their kids and so on. God helps and allows that tree to grow and to flourish. By relying on Him and living for Him, He will bless our, bless our trees. Make your family tree strong and well rooted in the, in the Lord. Be a standard setter, a leader, and not a follower as noted. Psalm 92, 12, 14, and 15 says, The righteous flourish like a cedar in Lebanon. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. Verse 15, To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Inspire faith, personal discipline. Have steadfast endurance and a contagious courage. Let your integrity be a constant part of your life. I know a lot of people have tremendous qualities. Some I bet they don't even know they possess, but it shows. It is not to boast about. Those are the standard setters. I don't want my, my grandkids, I don't want to tell my grandkids that I tried to be a leader and not a follower, or to tell them about other certain characteristics I may have. I want them to see it firsthand. Right now they don't understand all the words I tell them. Well, they probably do, because as a proud papa, I think they know and can do anything. But seriously, until the days of a full-on conversation, 
I want them to see what I'm all about. Remember, no one has ever promised tomorrow. That is why tomorrow never comes and is always called today. Take care of things today and prepare for tomorrow. Yeah. As, I was in the, as I was going through the process of writing this, thinking and praying on how it was to be presented, one constant theme always came to the forefront, and that's where I got the title from, being an example. Following someone else's lead, having someone do it first, learning from it, having it fail or succeed. However, the best role model that ever lived was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was perfect. He did it all. He did it all right the first time around. He never made a mistake, never required a redo or a mulligan. He even died perfectly. None of us ever saw him but those who did record it. 66 books of perfection recorded over approximately 1,500 years by 40 main authors. There is our role model. The scriptures are the original internet, so to speak. The Bible has, all, has been referred to and has all the answers to all life's tough questions. It instructs us on how to do things, how to love others. God is always there for us no matter what happens. All things lead back to Him. God wants us to talk to Him, reference His Word, give Him our problems, everything. I mentioned off the top, I have seven out of eight grandparents and great-grandparents alive when I was born. I often wonder why me, of all people, would be blessed this way. I knew some of them better than others, and I saw some more than others. The constant was they all loved me, and all wanted the best for me. They all worked hard, and struggled through tough times, and made some tough decisions. I think that was preparing me to be a grandfather. They relied on the Lord for the answers for the decisions. My grandpa Crouch used to sit in that same seat, where Edgar Edgar is, for years upon years. Had many of these qualities, if not all of them, that I spoke about today. I mentioned it already, but today I will again. And that was Marie's mom, Meryl. She was a tremendous grandma as well. I called her Marilyn, of course, but to everyone else she was nanny. Marilyn was a true example of being a role model and a nanny to countless, countless children, not just their own, whether it be from the community where Marie grew up or from her school. She was there for everyone. My mom, she's another wonderful example of learning from someone previous on how to do things and do things well. Everyone likes to think that they have in their own family the cream of the crop. And I have no exception. We've all learned from this lady, received her blessings, and had her spend countless hours praying for us. My grandma. Ivy Crouch, the ultimate grandma in my eyes. I we thank God for her for all we have and have been blessed to know her. I know I shouldn't reveal a lady's age, but I'm sure most of you know that my grandma is 99 plus years old. My oldest granddaughter, Ava, who is here today, is nearing two, and my youngest granddaughter, Zara, is nearing one. She was actually born about a week before Grandma's birthday. It's not too often you can celebrate your birthday and have a picture with your great-great-grandma when you are one at the same time she's turning 100. <clears throat> Dave and Zara will have that opportunity, God willing. We took a picture a few months ago of the now five generations of our family, and it's pretty remarkable to have that. The stories and things that we can tell them about Graham over a hundred years will be part of the legacy that she leaves to them and to us, the same way both Marie and I hope and plan God willing to leave to them also. Marie also told me a while ago something that has stuck with me and forever will. I sometimes need to be successful at work for a meeting, for a deadline, fixing something. She told me she just wants to be successful as a grandma. 